What's up, spectators? Welcome back to another episode of Hotel Dusk. Last time we got into the bar, we messed around with the jukebox and picked some songs. We did some puzzles with the matches. And now we're speaking with Helen, who's lonely. And Hyde, who's also lonely. Both very lonely people. Okay. How long have you been alone? You always been alone? Oh no, no, not always. There was a time when I had someone in my life. A lot can happen when you live as long as I have. What's your wish? So what's this wish of yours? Now, now, Mr. Hyde, that's my secret. All people have at least one genuine wish in their heart, don't you think? But you never really hear about such things, because they're so personal. Not the kind of thing you just give away to anyone, don't you agree? Okay, you had a family once. Not everything you hoped it would be. Oh no, it's nothing like that. It's just... Well, it's all in the past, you see. Nothing interesting to speak of. You don't want to talk about it? I'll mind my business and my drink. Just thought hearing about you in the heyday might be a kick in the pants. Sorry to keep you waiting. We got a gimlet for the beautiful young woman. Oh ho, what a rascal you are. Oh, and bartender, I'd like to order this man a bourbon. That's three double bourbons. My man. Now, Mr. Hyde, how would you like to play a little game with me? Just to pass the time until your bourbon comes. I'm not much for games. Oh, but you'll like this one. It's more of a trick, really. Now, just give me one moment to set this up. All right, I think that should do. Now, as you can see, I have six coins in front of me. You must arrange them so there are four in a row both vertically and horizontally. Oh, okay, like a cross. Oh, but here's the fun part. You can only move one coin. Mm. Do you think you can beat my little game, Mr. Hyde? Okay, I'll bite. But if I win, you have to tell me about your past, deal? Agreed. Um, so they have to be equally long as they are equally wide, horizontally and vertically. So we have three and four. So let me think here. All we need is to, hmm, this is interesting. Three and four. Um... Wow, that's dirty. That's... That's dirty. Wow. Helen! You... Perhaps it was too easy for you. That's some outside-the-box thinking. Very well then, as promised, I'll tell you a little bit about my past. I'm listening. The truth is, this is not my first stay at this hotel. Wait a minute. Um... When were you here? I first stayed here 20 years ago. Then I returned 10 years later. Wait, you've been coming here once a decade for 30 years? That's correct. Back then, the stories about room 215 didn't even exist. It all happened so long ago. At that time, I was working in Las Vegas. So, what did you do? Professional gambler? No, no, nothing so glamorous, I'm afraid. I was a magician. That's pretty glamorous, being a magician. That's awesome. Yes, before I lost this eye, I used to entertain huge crowds of people. You're a magician. Hide my man. Do I have something special for you? This brother, 
is the best bourbon in the house. Aged 12 years. Oh my, look at the time. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I must be off. Thank you for engaging this old lady in such spirited conversation, Mr. Hyde. Please enjoy the rest of your drink. Bartender, would you please help me up to my room? Oh, uh, sure. Yo, Hyde, looks like I gotta run Grandma Patch back to her room. Can you keep an eye on the place till I get back? Sure. Helen and Louie leave the bar together. Eh, I can get all the free drinks I want! Let me go to my bourbon. Real slow. The glass is filled with bourbon. Who's there? Well, if it isn't Mr. Hyde. Oh, you. Are you the only one here? Yeah. Bartender had to step out, but he's coming back. Yes, I should have expected that in this place. So are you heading for bed, Mr. Hyde? I would hate to interrupt your leaving. Why are you so interested when I'm going to bed, huh? Why are you so interested when I'm going to bed, Iris? Nope, barkeep asked me to watch the place until he gets back. Which will probably take a while. Oh, I see. I can't imagine why I'm asking you this, but... Would you like to have a drink together? What? What? No! What is this? What is... No! Sorry, maybe later. Oh, really? Okay, I get it. Get what? You're not used to sharing a drink with a young, attractive woman such as myself. Think what you want, I still ain't drinking with you. Why? Hide! Hide, why? You mind? Not at all. Never mind, I think I'll drink alone tonight. Damn, you're so cold! Yes, it is filled with bourbon, my old friend. Who's there? Ah, this guy. And a fine evening to you, Mr. Hyde. Summer? Don't you have a book to plagiarize or something? So this is where you have sought refuge from the weight of this cruel world. I thought you might be in your room, but found it empty. You've been looking for me? Why? Our last discussion ended on somewhat awkward terms. I'd hope to start anew. No thanks, Shakespeare. I got no interest in anything else you have to say. Your words wound me, sir. I'd hope to find you in a more charitable mood. Perhaps you do not appreciate the gravity of my earlier confession. The truth remains that I revealed the secret which I had guarded for ten years. And to a traveling salesman that I had met not hours before. You're a curious fellow, sir, and I find myself in awe of your gruff nature. And so I thought we could engage in a further bit of light conversation. Mr. Hyde? Yeah? I'm finding that drinking alone is just as sad and pathetic as I thought it would be. I'll be leaving now. Do enjoy the remainder of your thrilling evening. Iris, wait, no! Damn it, Hyde! Now you're stuck with Summer. I say... What? Who is that woman? She's the dame staying in 216. Name's Iris. Iris? Oh no, that's not right. Hold it. What's not right? Oh, it's nothing, really. I just had the feeling I'd seen that young woman before. By the way, Mr. Hyde, I have just remembered a small nugget that may be of interest to you. Go on. You recall asking me about Ostrazone, yes? Well, during our chat, I failed to mention something about the image on my bookmark. Three years ago, you see, that particular painting was on display and... Somebody nicked it. Oh, you knew already. Yeah. But, 
but how could you possibly know this? Not two hours ago, you did not even know the name of Osterzone. How did you manage to find out about the theft so quickly? I did a little research. Research, you say? And just how did you manage this? I ain't playing 20 questions with you, pal. See you around. Wait, please, Mr. Hyde, just one moment, please. It is as I suspected. You, sir, are no ordinary salesman. Yes, yes, it's clear as day now. It all makes sense. Ba -ba -ba. Oh, what all makes sense? You figure something out? Just a bit of deductive reasoning is all. I am, after all, a mystery novelist first and foremost. I couldn't help but attempt to grasp your true nature. A thieving mystery novelist. You claim to know nothing of Ostrazone or his work. And yet you seem quite well informed on this matter. How is that? You are also employed as a salesman, but lack even the most basic of people skills. So what can we deduce from this, hmm? Maybe I can deduce my fist up your ass. Bet that shut you up. But enough wordplay. It is time to, as they say, lay my cards on the table. Oh, you like that? You like a little bit of verbal jousting? You big coward? You, sir, are on the trail of Oster's own stolen masterpiece. Yes, works such as Angel opening a door must be insured for a princely sum. I surmise that you are in the employ of this insurance company. You have been hired to track down the painting and return it to the rightful owners. This salesman act is nothing more than a mink stole on a cheap lady of the night. Now that, sir, is deduction. Behold the power of my reasoning and wit. You done making stuff up? What? Are you telling me that this is not your purpose here? Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Oh, but I deduced. I was so certain of it. Well, I'm certain that you're an idiot, and only one of us is right. And you couldn't deduce your way out of a wet sack. That's why your books sell like fried crap at a county fair. I see, I suppose I should thank you for such honest advice. But know this, the more you resist, the more determined I am to learn about you. How do you know Iris? Where'd you meet her? I think perhaps it was... No, I'm sorry, Mr. Hyde. I fear my memory has failed me. But if I manage to lift the fog from my mind, I shall notify you post-haste. Make no mistake about it, Mr. Hyde. I shall discover your true identity. Summer leaves the bar. I have had about enough of that guy. Alright, let's keep drinking. Ba -ba -ba -ba. The glass is filled with bourbon. How I've missed you. Yo, hi. Thanks for watching the place. Anyone swing by while I was out? Two birds showed, but they both left. Aw, oh, man. Wish they'd stuck around till I got back. You're better off this way, trust me. That's cold, Hyde. I thought you were supposed to be working with people now. Can't never let a customer leave angry, dig? Louie, you're making my head hurt. Sorry, man. Didn't mean to bring you down. Wasn't you. I think I'm done here. Okay, cool. Well, bar's open till midnight, so swing back if you get bored, yeah? We still gotta have that drink together. Alright, I guess I'm out of here then. Why, hello there. Oh, Mr. Hyde, good evening. You're still cleaning? Oh yes, clean, clean, clean. That's all poor Rosa does. This old hotel's about to fall apart, you know. Sometimes I think I'm the only thing that keeps it going. Besides, the key to good housekeeping is sticking with it. Can't let dirt win. Guess not. 
So, where were you, huh? You stopped by the bar? Yeah. Oh, and how was it? Not bad. That's good to hear. Dining decided to let Louie manage the bar all by his lonesome. That boy, when it comes to cleaning, he just wants to loaf, but he loves that bar. Seems so. Well, that's Louie for you. I wish you would put the same effort into helping me. But really? Land sakes, no. How long has that bar been here? Oh, quite a while now. I heard it was open to celebrate the hotel's 10th anniversary. Mm-hmm. Me? I think it's too small, but folks seem to be taken with it anyway. It's always full, and the folks there always leave me a terrible mess. When was the anniversary? So when was the 10th anniversary? Well, let's see. Hotel was built 20 years ago. That was 1959, so... 1969, if my math is right, and I just know it is. 10 years ago. Wait a second. That incident with the missing kid happened about 10 years ago. So I heard about a strange incident that went down 10 years ago. You know anything about that? Oh. Tell me about the story. So the story's true. So you heard, did ya? I can just guess who told you. Little bird. I just bet. Well, I'm a terrible liar, so I guess I can't pretend not to know. So it's true. Yes, Mr. Hyde, it's true. Every word. That's interesting. Ha! Oh, Rosa Fuju, but good. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Hyde. What? Oh, you should have seen your face. Woo! No, I'm afraid it's just a rumor. But when I started here, I thought it was true too. And for a fact. Rosa, you made a joke. Did it hurt? Oh, hush now. Anyway, when I first asked Dunning if it was true, he flat out laughed at me. And here I was hoping to get a peek at a ghost. What silliness. And that's one word for it. Dunning says that this kind of thing happens all the time. Well, with hotels changing owners and closing down and so forth. Well, rumors get started and folks talk about ghosts and murders and there you go. Oh, look at me chatting away like I have all the time in the world. So much cleaning still to do. And look at the time. Busy, busy, busy. Now get out of your hair. Oh, but Mr. Hyde, maybe you want to hear more about this hotel's history, hmm? Well, if I were you, I'd ask Dunning himself. Yes, I would. I'm sure the old coot is around somewhere. I'll do that. You will? Good. And I'll get back to my cleaning. And with that, let's end this video here. So stay tuned for the next one, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye!